The congregation will please stand. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my waking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend, and not a stranger. For none of us have life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. It is with great sincerity of spirit and heart that we welcome you this day as we celebrate Ivan's life. We welcome his family and his friends and as we remember all that he was to us, we hold up his life in God, that life which is in fullness of being, even now as we gather. So welcome one and all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Ivan, we thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Ivan's family in their grief. Surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, 
and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the, Lord of the, ho the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I have to say that after reading that wonderful bio at the end of the bulletin about Ivan's experience a few years ago, of kayaking into a shipping lane, I do concur with your choice, sons, of the gospel reading. It seems like the refrain, Lord, how can we know where we are going, seems very apropos to such an adventure-filled life. What a great image of Jesus, though, right? the boat captain who plucks us out of dangerous waters and brings us safely aboard, only for us to then strike up a friendship with him. Luckily, for both Ivan and for the many, many others whom God placed in Ivan's care, my guess is that for the most part, Ivan did actually know how to lead others in the right direction. To carry the metaphor of Jesus, the boat captain, a bit further down the river, Ivan, in the way of Jesus, plucked many a person out of dangerous waters so that they could continue their life's journey spiritually better off, educationally better off, and better equipped for the waters ahead. The world is a confusing and often unforgiving place to navigate. We can end up in the shipping lane far faster than we would ever intend. So how indeed can we know the way? Today we give thanks to God for the many people who were guided by and to Jesus through Ivan's life. Many of you gathered here, my guess is, would put yourself in that category of people and friend. What a blessing. What a true blessing it is to gather and celebrate the life so extraordinarily and yet graciously lived. As we reflect on Ivan's life and spiritual legacy, the words, though, that seemed quite striking to me actually come from the Romans reading, Romans 8 that we heard. There is something about that very plain language of the text that I imagine might have appealed greatly to Ivan and perhaps served as a lens through which he viewed his many callings. 
Before I delve into this powerful scripture, though, I want to point out something about this service, about actually burial offices in general. As you will see in your bulletin towards the end, no need to look now, channeling Ivan's teacher mode on that one. (laughs) Don't look at the end now. Pay attention. All burial offices in the Episcopal Church are Easter liturgies. For the Christian church, though, we happen to be in the season of Lent right now, a time when we refrain from using the word alleluia so that we bring it back on Easter morning to brighten our joy at the resurrection. You see, alleluia only has one meaning. It is the word of purest joy and adoration, a word by which we utter complete joy to revere God. Alleluia. You can feel it as you say it. However, during Lent, even at a celebration of life, I didn't just break the rules in case you're wondering, at a celebration of life, even if it's Lent, we bring back the alleluias. And then, for those of you who will be here or in another church on Sunday morning, you do need to endeavor to refrain from them again so that you are not doing an alleluia solo on Sunday morning. Just a word to the wise. At the commendation, which comes later in the service, we have the words, even at the grave, we make our song, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And the custom is to increase the volume with each one of those alleluias, so as to say that at the time of death, we do not sing a sedate song, a mournful song, a grief-ridden song, but an ever-increasing song of adoration and praise. The reason behind this song, I think, is beautifully expressed in our passage from the Romans, uh, the book to the Romans. The full story of Christ's life given for us, plainly stated. God has given us everything and will stand with us, never abandoning us. To make this a forever covenant, God gave us Jesus who for each of us died. He went through death for us. And he was raised from the dead and resides with God so that humanity will always have an advocate, an intercessor. Or as one biblical translator says it that I love, Jesus will always stick up for us. And because of this, Through Jesus, nothing, nothing separates us from God's love, even if we are in the worst possible situation, even when we are in the deepest grief, even when the world will never be the same because of pain or suffering or loss, absolutely nothing wins out over the love that God has for us. It is powerful to imagine how many times Ivan expressed this. Just ponder that for a moment. Certainly overtly in sermons, Ivan would have preached the unconditional and relentless love God has for each and every person. But also to his multitude of students throughout the years, especially those who attended Valley High, he would have encouraged those in his care to never give up to never lose faith, and to know that they were profoundly, profoundly loved. But beyond his words, it would have been his life that best expressed this truth. In the hardest of life circumstances, in raising children, in being a part of a large and and just glorious family, He would have guided people through the experience of the moment into the knowledge that there is always resurrected life. It does not matter that we fail. It does not matter that we are not successful. It does not matter that our families might struggle. God always prevails. And Jesus is always ready to reach out a hand to us and lift us to safety if we but trust our life into his care. 
This knowledge that nothing will ever separate us from the love of God is why even at the grave we make our song. Why even in Lent we can't contain ourselves when the grief of a li- the, when we grieve the life of a loved one whom death has taken for us. We stand in the face of death and grief and we make our resurrection song. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Death never wins. Even with grief heavy upon our souls, we do not mourn as those who mourn without hope, but as those who know that through God's love, we are always one. Always. My guess is that this might have been the source of the twinkle in Ivan's eyes. He knew the deep love of God and offered that love to others. On the night of Epiphany, when I went to anoint Ivan with Deacon Libby, I saw that deep love expressed in his sons, Nick and Alex. Love, I thought, is a powerful legacy. Though few of us will leave such a rich legacy as Ivan did through his family and his work as a priest and educator, literally changing countless lives, that is okay. Because his greatest legacy was his love for God that guided all of his relationships. That is a legacy we all can both receive from Ivan and leave behind for those we love. It is, in fact, the legacy that God gives to each of us. So the next time you are in rough waters, remember the story of Jesus, the boat captain, and Ivan. And whether you are giving or receiving help, all that matters is that you reach out your hand for both the giving and the receiving. For both are an alleluia moment. Amen. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our brother Ivan, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Ivan and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. 
You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Ivan and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So you're all uh, warmly, you can be seated, sorry. <laughs> you're all warmly invited into the parish hall for a, a time of celebration uh, and short story sharing. Uh, so that'll be immediately after the service. The, the committal will be for immediate family only. Um, and for communion, uh, we'll have three stations, uh, one on the floor here and two at the high altar, gluten-free uh, option is available at the high altar. If you'd like to come forward uh, and not receive communion, uh, but get a blessing instead, simply place your, your arms uh, over your chest and uh, one of the priests would be happy to give you a blessing. The place, as you might suspect, is lousy with priests. So, um, so. And a, a reminder as well that uh, this altar does not belong to this uh, parish or this denomination. It's Christ himself who calls you and Christ who meets you here. So please, please feel welcome. Uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own hath we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death and resurrection and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. body of Christ, the blood of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Continuing on page 11 in your bulletin, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us with spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Servants, give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal formed of the earth, and to the earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting.
Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Ivan. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwell deeply within you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Ensure and certain hope to the rest.
you're welcome. Ha, ha, ha. 